When Ford launched the redesigned 2018 Mustang, a lot of enthusiasts were hot and cold over the front end. Now, personally, I'm a fan. I like it's more like a Shelby look. It's more aggressive looking. But one of the biggest changes to the front besides the headlights was the marker lights. You know, gone are the traditional fog lights down below, and they're moved up to the marker light. And like a lot of 2018 enthusiasts, when I got my 2018, I wanted to upgrade the marker lights to a sequential LED like we did in the previous models. Well, when you took it apart, everybody found out that it was one assembly. You had one LED housing that housed both the fog light and the marker light, so you couldn't change out the bulbs. Well, thanks to Die Dynamic, that's now available, and today we're gonna install it on this 2020 Mustang GT. These Elite Series LED housings from Die Dynamics will be direct replacement for the factory housings on your 2018 through 2021 Mustang GT or Mustang EcoBoost. They feature a fog light that's 30% brighter than the factory fog light and has a bright white 6000K output. They're also available with a yellow fog light for a unique look, but it'll be a 3000K output. The marker lights on these housings are going to be sequential. And you have your choice of three different speeds. You have your normal, what they call US speed, which matches the tail lights. You have your European speed, which will be a lot faster, or you can actually turn the sequencing off. They also have a daytime running light option and a unique light up when you turn the car on. Again, they're gonna be direct replacements for the factory setup and include the wiring harnesses for installation. To install the new diode housings, we will have to take off the bumper to get to the factory pieces. So the first thing we're gonna do is pop off the radiator cover. Let's basically pop out all these pins. Next, remove these two 5.5 millimeter screws from each end. And then remove the six screws. Now down the wheel, we're gonna separate the splash shield. There's gonna be one back here, one clip here, one here, and one hidden up here. To remove these, just simply push in the middle, use a little screwdriver and just pop it out. Then there's two more clips back here. Now we're gonna pull back the splash shield and then right back here, we'll show you in a second, there's gonna be two 10 millimeter nuts that hold the bumper to the fender. And give it a little tug to separate it. Then repeat the process on the other side. Okay, now we need to remove the screws here, the other ones in the middle. Then remove these clips on the side. The belly pan off. Now we can completely separate the fender. Same thing on the other side. I'm gonna use this stool here and lift the bumper cover off the studs. And then reach down, disconnect the harness. Now put the bumper down on someplace safe, a blanket, something soft. Then we're gonna remove the screws holding in the factory housing. This is really hard to see, but inside the plug for our new Diodynamics housings, there's a little switch on top of the wires. It says static, EU, and US. Static will be non-sequential, EU is gonna be a really fast sequential, and US will match your factory tail which I'm assuming most people are gonna to wanna to go with. It comes preset to US, and we're gonna leave that alone. Now we're gonna take our housing, put it in the factory spot here, and reinstall the factory screws. And then do the same thing with the other light. Diode includes this harness that will allow your new housings to also work as an additional DRL for the front of your Mustang. Now to do that, basically this is gonna plug into your headlight plug and this wire will go down and tap into the fog light plug. So first we're gonna do is connect the headlight side. So reach up from underneath, grab the headlight plug, unplug it. With disconnected, you're gonna fish it down, grab our new plug, wait until it clicks, and make sure this wire's dropped down and plug that back into your headlight. 
Now the additional wire is gonna go in the unused slot inside your fog light marker light plug. Now there's two ways you're gonna have it. So you either have this little white stud in here, which can be removed, or there's gonna be a little black block out plate that you'll have to actually grab a small pair of pliers and bump out. But either way, to get to that, you start by pulling off this cover here. And to remove this, basically, let's get a little small screwdriver to get back in here. You can pop it out. And then you can see in the harness that little white piece. Simply just push that through. See if you can grab it. If not, a small pair of pliers will work. Now you want to grab the purple wire and make sure it matches the orientation of the existing wiring harness. Slide it in the back. You should hear it click into place. Now that all the wire is in place, reinstall this little cover and repeat the process on the other side. And now we can slide the bumper back into place. Don't forget to connect. And slide this up into place. Make sure it goes over the head like, like it's supposed to. Don't tighten anything. Just get it seated for now. Now, before you put all the bumper hardware back on, do a quick test to make sure they work. It's going to happen. You'll actually watch them cycle through when you open your door. All right, now you can see them in the DRL mode. We'll try our hazards, which will be our turn signals. And back to DRL. Now we'll turn our headlights on and try our fog lights. All right, now that we test fit our lights and everything works, we can reinstall all the bumper hardware. And the last step is reinstall the cover. And your installation is finished. I think Diode really hit out of the park with these LED housings. You get a complete replacement housing, it's simple to install, and you get that nice LED sequential turn signal and a much brighter fog light. Now again, these are available with the white fog light shown here. We also offer them with the yellow fog light. As far as the install goes, you do gotta pop the bumper off. It really isn't that bad though. Give yourself about two hours or so, we'll be back on the road in no time.